Hello, and welcome to Module 4, Editing. Before you start, the best thing you can do to make your life easier in the edit is to get organised. Put all the footage for your film in one folder, even if you're editing on your phone. Do the same for your music, sound effects and anything else you need. Once you've done that, sit down for a minute and remind yourself what you want your finished film to be like. Sad, funny, scary. Having a clear goal will help you to make decisions as you go along. If you've done several takes of something, choosing the best one can be tricky. There may not be one perfect take, but remember what we said about B-roll. You can use parts of different takes by cutting to a shot of something else. A typical situation would be a conversation between two characters, where you've done two over-the-shoulder shots. Here you can use a different take for each line if you need to, as long as the continuity is good. Also, look out for happy accidents, things that weren't in the script. Sometimes they're the best bits. If you've shot the same event from two different angles, say a wide and a close-up, and you want to cut between them, try to cut on the action. This tends to feel more natural and helps the scene to flow. Be aware of pacing. Lots of quick cuts will make your film feel more energetic whereas longer cuts will make it more relaxed. Try to keep your goal in mind. Think about how you want your audience to feel when they watch your film, and make sure the pace of your editing helps to create that feeling. Sometimes, instead of simply cutting from one shot to the next, you might want to use a transition such as a dissolve. Even phone apps offer a wide choice of options, but you'll notice that commercially produced films very rarely employ anything but straight cuts, dissolves, fade-ins and fade-outs. Gimmicky transitions will usually distract from your story, but as with any other aspect of filmmaking, there are no hard and fast rules. If something works for your film, go with it. The Star Wars films made heavy use of wipes, and it hasn't done them any harm. Altering the look of your footage is a big topic, but for the beginner it's not something you need to worry about. However, there are some simple adjustments you may want to make to your footage. That can be done on a phone as well as a computer. Brightness. Your phone will make automatic exposure adjustments while you're filming, and the results may not be what you want. If you're making a horror film, for example, darker is more scary. Saturation. Saturation is how strong the colours in your image are. Boost it for vivid colours, or reduce it for a more muted look. Setting it to zero gives you black and white, which you can also get by applying a filter. Filters. Editing apps offer lots of filters to apply to your footage, and these can be fun to play with, as long as you don't go too crazy. Once again, keep your end goal in mind, and only use a filter or other effect if it helps your film to achieve that goal. We said at the beginning that it's good to have an idea of how you want people to feel when they watch your film. The most powerful way to affect the audience's emotions is with music. If you're not sure what music to use, try a few options once you have your footage edited. Once you hit on something that works for the film, you may want to go back and tweak the edit for example, to make it fit the pace of the music better. You may be tempted to use commercially released music by your favourite artists, but be aware that your film may get taken down for copyright infringement. If you want to avoid that risk, there's lots of free music available online aimed specifically at amateur content producers. And of course, you can always make your own. Sound effects can also make a lot of difference to the mood of your film. Of course, if you have someone firing a gun, for instance, you'll need a gunshot sound to make it more realistic. <coughs> but you can also use sounds like wind, rain or traffic to create a sense of place and atmosphere. If you have people speaking in your film, always make sure they can be heard above the music and sound effects. When editing on a phone, you should use headphones or a decent Bluetooth speaker to monitor your sound levels. 
Your film will need title graphics. What kind of film have you made? Have a look at other films in the same genre and see what title styles they use, small and subtle or big and bold. Lots of commercial films will have some cast and crew credits at the start, but all you really need is the name of your film. Save your personnel credits for the end, but don't forget to include them. The people who helped you make your film will want to see their name on screen. Phone video apps will give you a decent choice of fonts and colours, at least good enough to get you started. If you want more graphics options, you'll need to use a computer. You don't have to do titles the usual way though. How about writing the title of your film in the sand at the beach, in French fries on the table, or in fake blood on the kitchen floor? Your film is finally finished. It's beautifully edited and has great sound effects, music, titles and credits. Now what? You need to export it to create a single video file that you can share and watch on your TV, computer or phone. If you've done the whole thing on your phone, the app will offer you a choice of saving it to your photo gallery or sharing directly to a variety of social media platforms. The urge to do this will be strong, but before you do, it's a good idea to check your work on a larger monitor, such as a TV. You may well notice things that you didn't see on your phone screen that you want to go back and correct or change. Wait until your film is as good as you can make it, then share it far and wide. Now, what will your next one be?